pictured here. The Alexiev SM-1 was an incredible, first-of-its-kind, wing-and-ground-effect vehicle, which made its first flight on July 22, 1961. The prototype was the brainchild of Rostislav Evgenievich Alexiev, and was one of the forerunners of the famed Caspian Sea Monster. The photo shows crew members riding the SM-1 barely above the snow and ice. It was a real-life giant land speeder, capable of traveling at 200 kilometers per hour. Wig, or wing and ground effect. The Soviet Akranaplan vehicles, although this name wasn't yet coined at the time, were also referred to as ground effect or wing and ground effect vehicles. They worked similarly to hovercrafts, capable of flying above the surface thanks to the aerodynamic ground effect. In fixed wing aircraft, this effect provokes an increase in lift and a decrease in drag when the wings are close to a fixed surface. Such technology has been mostly exploited for vehicles that operate from water as flying boats, but the Alexiev SM-1 was made for flight above the ground. A chronoplan, meaning surface plane in Russian, presents several benefits as a transport platform. They have the advantage of being free from having to take off and land on runways. The vehicles have often been described as a combination of the best capabilities of ships and aircraft. The vehicles can speed through the surface of water or land by simulating a sliding car and therefore consuming little fuel. The fact that they fly above the surface makes them versatile for use over sea, ice, snow, or even the desert. They are cheaper to operate and can carry more than aircraft or helicopters and are faster than hydrofoil vessels. Potential military benefits include the stealth of these vehicles when avoiding radar detection. Since ground effect vehicles fly at such a low altitude, most enemy aircraft radars won't pick up on them. At the same time, the lack of ground or water contact makes them harder for sonars to detect and it makes it almost impossible for them to run into a mine. The USSR Ministry of Defense saw reasonable value in their developments. Still, there were challenges with these types of vehicles that had to be considered. Operating them required specially trained personnel. Traveling at low speeds with a ground effect vehicle is nearly impossible due to the need for high thrust speed ratios for the vehicle to work. Additionally, tight turns or avoidance turns are similarly impossible to perform. A swift change in direction could result in the wing meeting the ground or water and therefore crashing the vehicle. More so, the high speeds increase the likelihood of fatal accidents. Therefore, arriving at a busy port or traffic pack section would make the WIG vehicles deadly. SM-1 The Soviet Navy recruited Rostislav Alexiev, an engineer from Nizhny Novgorod, to work in their Akranaplan project. He began working on the very first wing ship model for the Soviet Union. Alexiev would go on to become one of the most celebrated Soviet military designers. He pioneered work on hydrofoil ships and launched the Soviet ground effect vehicles with a straight wing configuration. This contract led to the design and construction of the SM series of wing and ground effect test vehicles. Most of these were built and tested throughout the early 1960s. The SM-1 was the first completed full-scale WIG. It came after several model tests. His team created unique catapults to launch unpowered aerodynamic prototypes that were tested over water or hard surfaces. With the data collected from these high-speed tests, he planned out the first manned WIG. The SM-1 served as a three-seater vehicle with room for an additional potential person. The experimental craft was powered by a single turbojet placed above the fuselage without an engine cowling. The design featured two larger frontal straight wings and two smaller ones towards the rear. The vehicle was flight tested for the first time on July 22, 1961. That same year, it reached a maximum speed of 200 km per hour, or 124 miles per hour. Upon testing, it showed wing stability and dynamism when near the surface. Adding to the engineering accomplishments stemming from these tests, the SM-1 served as a powerful public relations promotional tool. The Central Hydrofoil Design Bureau arranged for Deputy Prime Minister of the USSR, Dmitry Ustinov, who would become Defense Minister of the country, to ride the SM-1. This granted the company and Alexeyev great support from the leaders of the Soviet Union. Unfortunately, the SM-1 was rather unsuccessful on several fronts. Its takeoff required a dynamic air cushion and wing lift. Furthermore, the takeoff speed was too high to be realistically safe. Due to the proximity of the wings to the ground and the high speed, the plane was difficult to handle, and the craft's reaction to controls varied depending on the altitude at which it flew. The flight envelope was narrow, which made the turning radius much too large. These complications were exacerbated by the vehicle's oversensitivity to rough surfaces. Still, as a prototype-like model, the SM-1 furthered the development of ground effect vehicles. SM-2 In 1962, Alexiev made several changes to his SM-1 design. 
This new version was the first winged craft to introduce underwing blowing to improve the aerodynamics of takeoff and landing. The project, labeled SM-2, had to be rebuilt after completion due to a hangar fire. The vehicle still presented problems, however. In particular, the new blowing system proved to aggravate the pitch stability issue. As a solution, Alexiev decided to remove the aft wing from the forward wing's zone of influence and away from the blowing zone. After these 1963 reconfigurations, the SM-2 came out in the same airplane-type configuration used by the Soviets in their subsequent Akronoplan designs. While the forward wing kept the in-ground effects through underwing blowing, the rear wing was out of ground. Furthering the design change, Alexeyev built a new SM, the 2P, in 1963. Furthermore, he designed a prototype for a combat wing and ground effect vehicle. This 38-meter wingspan by 92-meter long plane was given the moniker Caspian Sea Monster by the West. That enormous plane would become the most feared Akronoplan ever built. Future Wigs. In 1998, the economic crisis and lack of resources for future developments marked a halt for the manufacturing of Akronoplans. Furthermore, all flights for these types of vehicles were suspended in the recently formed Russian Federation. The 21st century has revived interest in the construction of ground effect vehicles. In 2014, scientists from the Far Eastern Federal University in Vladivostok, Russia, announced they were working on an early experimental version of a passenger wig. While the Russian Ministry of Defense has expressed interest, no funding for the development of such a program has been allocated.